more every week. Okay, people, welcome back to another <laughs> just action-packed, filled to the brim, Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and man, they are relentless. If it ain't a live stream, it's a Twitter revealed, or over here on Facebook, hey, look at our stuff. Amazon has a pre-order, and then so does Hasbro Pulse. But it's that season. San Diego would have been within the next month, and that's what it usually it just feels like more this year for some reason maybe i'm getting older and it's like er, er, back in my day we had to look at magazines for toy news but what am i complaining about i'm sitting at the computer like a fiend just <laughs> fiend i didn't Here's a quick teasy picture of NECA's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Secret of the Ooze Toka and Razar, just in case you haven't had enough TMNT this week, or you fried your brain yesterday trying to get that damn Casey Jones and Raph 2-pack. What a bunch of bullshit that was. It was like, here you go, oh, take it away. And most of all, it hurts my brain to see sold and shipped by NECA on the sell page. I mean, come on. But, yeah. Here's a picture of Toka and Razar that will probably be the same situation when it comes around this fall. No, I'm not mad. If I don't get this, I'll play with other toys. There's a lot of stuff out there. Because NECA is also teasing a Bruce the Shark from Jaws. When this releases, any more information, it's anybody's guess. They just showed this teaser picture. But this should be easier to get even though I have no clue where I'm going to put this thing because it's bigger than most fish I've actually seen in person. Something this big you think that they would offset the cost a bit by making it foam or some cheaper material, but Randy says that no, it's not going to be foam. So it's going to be a big old hunk of hunk of burning love plastic piece of shark. That sounded better in my head as it was coming. <laughs> Farewell and adieu to you poor empty wallets. First we saw the McFarlane Toys Mortal Kombat 11 spawn with a sword. And then we got pre-orders for a version with a mace, and now it seems like we're getting a target version that comes with an axe. Some say all the weapons probably could have come with the first figure, but there's also the thought that if it keeps getting reissued, even if it's different stores, there's a constant flow of our first fully articulated spawn in a while out there, ready to grab wherever. Me, I dig the sword. I'm glad I have it, plus the spawn figure. The mace doesn't really do anything to me, but the axe, actually, I got a package just today from McFarlane with that spawn and his axe. And look at, oh, I nearly cut my toe off. I love the green glowy eyes, and they bring that into the axe too. Ooh, it's a nice chunk of plastic, and I love the colors. It looks like it's worn. It's got the red, it's got the dark colors, but again, my favorite is the green glowing eyes. So probably look for that at Target soon. If I have it, then it's out there. But there was also an update to the Kickstarter spawn this week showing the progress so far. And you know what? I kind of miss Todd's hijinks <laughs> during that Kickstarter. It was just pure chaos the whole time. On this artist proof, we get to see the bicep swivels actually implemented and then the metal chains on the figure. Now the chains around the waist, they look kind of big. They look clunky. They look like a metal diaper actually, but they have said that they're tweaking on this. They're going to make them longer, hang down further, look a bit more natural. The wrist also looks like it's changed from what they had where it was a hinge to their standard 22 points wrist articulation. So basically, at least for me, the only sticking point that's still catching my eye when I look at this is the twisted torso. But even that, I figure when I put it on the shelf, it's going to be in a, yeah, you know, this is <laughs> robo action. As I was setting up to record and I, I was jumping in, Mezco went and put a tease up of an upcoming 112th Collective Silent Screamers Nosferatu. And I think the little teaser gets me more than the actual character. Yes, I know the character, but them doing it in the stop motion and a very, very nicely done advertisement, or well, tease for it, that makes me more excited. Plus, this is my favorite kind of Mezco. The clothes are real clothing. They're not meant to be skin tight superhero costume. So that's another plus for this figure. And that's on top of the sculpt looking great too. No details yet, no price, no release, but we should know that soon. It may pop up next week and then be go. The Tamashi Cinema site continues their spree of pictures and reviews and even teases, posting these four blocks in preparation for their, is it, is it next week? It's, it's upcoming, their Tamashi Features 2020. Theories abound in the community since all four of these quotes can be attributed to Thanos in either Infinity War or Endgame. So it could be a new version of an SH Figuarts Thanos of some kind. Maybe his final armor, no gauntlet, maybe. But I'm thinking it's probably four different characters who are either new 
or updates or reissues. There's four separate blocks and then underneath it says they. What does it say? They powered up and came back. I don't even know who you are was said to Scarlet Witch in Infinity War and then the next one is you could not live with your own failure was to cap Thor and Iron Man at the at, well, at least at the start of the final battle in Endgame. If I were to guess, I'd probably go with an Iron Man. The, the final moments Iron Man with the nano gauntlet, the blood, the damage. Thanos said no tricks to Doctor Strange in Infinity War, and that first Doctor Strange could do with an update or an upgrade of some kind. But I'm stumped with the and. It could be anybody, and I'm only assuming it's a Thanos quote because of the other three. But grain of salt, that's just me speculating, having a little fun, we should know more when the show starts July 4th. It looks like Cody from AEW has received a couple of Jazzwares figures of himself, and they're not looking bad. I think this is what we can expect from the final product. The plastic used is plainer than the prototypes we've seen, which is typical, but at the same time, the face, <laughs> I know this isn't the greatest picture, but the faces seem a bit Mezco-ish? Soft, and then the skin tone has kind of a translucency to it. But the ring gear is bright and beautiful and sharp, and it's a weird contrast, so I'm going to wait until I get them in hand before I make any decisions. I can't look at this and go, nope, hate them, I'm out. But then Jeremy of Jazzwares posted a little freshly squeezed tease of a gimmick of hands going into pants pockets. This can only be a not yet announced, but can't come out fast enough Orange Cassidy, because <laughs> that's one of my grails for this line, along with Luchasaurus. I still haven't seen anything of Luchasaurus. I haven't been following Mattel's Masters of the Universe Origins line. It's 5.5, it's a vintage throwback, and while I enjoyed the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive of He-Man and Adam, I didn't need anything past that. At least not until I saw this Orko. As far as a cartoon looking Orko goes, they knocked this out of the park, which isn't even the point of this line. It feels weird against the vintage looks of the rest of the figures. But I may like this more than the classics version. The base does seem to take quite a bit of real estate on the shelf, but it's magic and purple and awesome looking. I think I'm going to need this for my Filmation Classics display. $14.99 comes out this fall. I wasn't expecting any more Mafex reveals. <laughs> That's for UD. I wasn't expecting any more Mafex reveals in the midst of all these schedule changes that they're going through, but Medicom don't care. We're just going to keep throwing them out there. This week they hit us with a DC hush. It's been a while since I've read this storyline. It's been a long while, actually. So I wasn't as excited about Hush himself as I would have been about like Nightwing or especially a Robin, but it's not a bad thing to throw a villain into this line. Well, they have Catwoman, but you know what I mean. Like other offerings in the Mafex DC Hush line, this looks like it leapt right out of the page, right into plastic form. But is it weird that my eyes are drawn directly to the shin pads? Don't get me wrong, the rest of the figure looks amazing, but there's just something about the sculpting there, and especially the patina used. It comes with alternate heads of Grimm, Grimmer, and Jason, and even goes as far as to give us swappable logos for the chest and belt. It goes from H's to R's, and that's something I wouldn't have expected. There's also dual pistols, a blade, and a coin. Oddly enough, one of my first thoughts when I saw this figure was, why why does he get a plastic cape while Gambit gets a cloth cape? And I can only come up with Gambit being a much more acrobatic character. That's all I've got. Or it's different teams working on different lines. I, I don't know. I, well, Batman comes with a cloth cape, doesn't he? Or as I've seen several people comment, Medicom up to their old tricks. They want you to buy two hushes and then you can swap the arms and the cape onto Gambit if you don't care for soft goods. That would be devious, but in my experience with this line, the parts aren't usually that swappable. They change up the engineering figure to figure, line to line. But the thought is still there. Hmm. $80 scheduled for April, but... Ow, I just cracked my <laughs> We all know how the Metacom schedule goes. As the Moffex DC Batman line grows without any pre-orders actually coming out, so does the Marvel Spider-Man line, at least the Into the Spider-Verse subline. This week, Metacom adds Spider-Gwen to the schedule, and do I even need to say it? She swings right off the screen into your toy display. The articulation here is a bit more obvious than other figures in this line, but they're working with a thinner frame. There's not as much bulk to hide the, the joints and the parts and the pieces. But whoa, look at these alternate heads. Between the effect around the masked eyes to the lifelike qualities of the unmasked heads to the texture all over the body, there's a lot to look at here. And besides the heads and maybe a spider web and some alternate hands, she also comes with spider ham. But like its Marvel Legends counterpart, there's not a lot of articulation here. I think it only has a ball joint at the neck 
and then for the different arm movements, it's swappable arms. I guess they deemed him too small and too accessory. You know what I mean? Accessory, accessory like to have full articulation. Still a great addition to their Into the Spider-Verse line along with Peter and Miles. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if we see Penny or Noir right around the corner. And Prowler, please? And Kingpin? That would be a hell of a figure. $90, I'm guessing because of all the different parts. And again, they say April. Earlier this week, Super 7 confirmed that their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimates! Wave 1 were on the water, heading from the factory to their warehouse, and then hopefully to our grubby little hands soon enough. But that was quickly followed by the full reveal for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Wave 3, with April, Michelangelo, Metalhead, and Rocksteady. All inspired by their original toy glory and just packed with accessories. Mikey has his vintage inspired head along with a modernized version and then a pizza with slides, hands, and several weapons. Metalhead has his radical robo chucks, wait, what? Along with a backpack, blaster, grenades, and some hands. Rocksteady is looking big and beefy. You can look at this and see how much he towers over the other figures. And then the rhino hide look is awesome. And he comes with hands and weapons. And then finally, April comes with a camera equipment, an ID bag, communicator shuriken people keep asking what happened to april's head and all i can think is that's what it looked like in the original line just updated a little bit you know that's the whole basis for this series but even though it's not shown the description does say interchangeable heads so hopefully sometime in the next month they'll show a modernized head or a more accurate cartoon or something like the turtles get where it's a different look $45 each and scheduled for the second quarter of 2021 also super 7 knows what's going on they're saving the best turtle for last you guys keep arguing with me but there's just too much evidence the Hasbro Star Wars team had an early fan first Friday on Monday and they showed mostly things we already knew about in new wrappers in fact all of the six inch offerings are re-releases they debuted the empire strikes back 40th anniversary wave three consisting of darth vader with his slight changes to make him the empire version like the re-sculpted chest box and the tunic being under the shoulder armor boba fett who was a shoe-in for this series we knew he was going to be on this card but I would have at least liked to have seen some updates here and there. Chewbacca is a repack of the Amazon exclusive that came with the Break Apart C-3PO, and I'll admit it, this is my favorite version of this Chewbacca, and that was my favorite version of that C-3PO too. But if you missed out on that or didn't want to get both of them, here's your next chance at that. The Snowtroopers colors have been tweaked a bit to make it slightly different from the first version. And then Dagobah Luke is the same version we're getting in the upcoming two-pack with the re-sculpted Yoda, just without the accessories and Yoda. We'll probably see that figure in the Return of the Jedi 40th anniversary wave. And that's what this is. It's just a big old gimmick to get more money out of molds. It's a nostalgia cash grab. And I'm not gonna lie, it works on me. I don't need these figures, but putting it on that card back, it just reminds me of my childhood too much. Nothing wrong with that, but there's also nothing wrong with, I already have these characters, I don't need this. You can just pass on by. And then the other reveal was that the recently released 40th anniversary Hoth Rebel Trooper will be coming in the next series of the main line in those new pretty boxes. I don't keep boxes here and I already have this figure but it's an army builder with multiple faces. I don't mind getting another one. But it would have been awesome to give us different face plates here or even different skin tones. Some options of some kind. Around $20 set to release in October. Oh Transformers you and I have such a torrid love affair. I watched you and bought you in the 80s but skipped many more after that. I grabbed the random masterpiece and then I definitely grabbed the Toys Alliance MAS Optimus Prime and Megatron, but that line sadly died and then I fell down the War for Cybertron Siege and Earthrise rabbit hole. But after years of rambling about not caring about alt modes and I only want the robots and the characters themselves, Hasbro today goes and debuts their Transformers R.E.D. line. They are non-transforming Transformers and that may be blasphemous to some and I, I guess I get it, but at the same time, ooh, these are for me, not for you. You still get your transforming transformers from several different companies and all kinds of third party lines. I'll take these. RED stands for Robot Enhanced Design, and they're fairly faithful to the G1 cartoon aesthetics. I've seen comments of they look soft and all, but welcome to the 80s, motherfucker. The best description I've seen of these is Transformer Legends. They're six inch ish. <laughs> That's hard to say. Six inch ishes, six ish inches tall. Fairly nice articulation without the kibble and the compromises that come with a weapon or vehicle mode. The Authorized Optimus Prime is fantastic. So, <laughs> and I'm already thinking in terms of 
can I take these and replace my siege figures on the shelf? And while this Optimus looks great, I don't really care for the Matrix showing through the window pecs. But in my opinion, this Megatron blows both the Siege and Earthrise versions out of the water. It's just a better translation overall. And look at that ab crunch! Ooh. Again, without the transforming aspect, it can capture the overall look way better. And just this morning, they had to seal the deal with the reveal of Soundwave, my nearest and dearest Transformer ever. I love this guy. The look, the voice, the way he carries himself on a battlefield, the ability to hold his minions within his chest cavity, and the figure can even reach up push his shoulder button that opens up the chest to reveal an actual cassette in there. It probably doesn't transform because that's not the point of this line. <laughs> but going back to replacing figures you already have on the shelf, I think these will clock a little shorter than their Earthrise and Siege versions, but at the same time, I'm thinking that'll fudge right in. Because I'm getting that Megatron, and I'm getting that sound wave, and they will be going in there, and if I have this Megatron on the shelf, I have to get the Optimus to make him match. Make them both side by side. Oh, I'm such a good little consumer. Ooh. And then if the line continues, I'll probably do the same with other characters. And if leaks are to be believed, there are more on the way. They are Walmart exclusive. <laughs> so that may be a sticking point for some people. But $20, man, that's not bad. But most exciting, at least for me, in a week just jam-packed full of toy news, is the new reveals for Hasbro's G.I. Joe Classified series line. We found out about Cobra Commander last week and what a cluster that became, but this week we get clarification. The network and the regular release is dark blue, which for some reason they sent a light blue version, a prototype that wasn't meant to even be released to the network, and then we all know what happened there. But now, because of the feedback from seeing that lighter blue version, they have now made the Cat and Crunch, well, what they're calling the Regal version, a Pulse exclusive. It's funny how things work out like that. Oopsie, did you want that? Well, we're gonna make it exclusive, and we weren't gonna give it to you, but since you were so nice about it, here you go. You know, at some point, you, you get sick of being treated stupid, you know? And I understand. It's a company, they gotta make their money, they gotta do their thing, but... Really? Don't get me wrong, I wanted both versions, so this works out for me, but... Really? The Regal version will be available on Pulse throughout the next month, and then will release in December, while, the, like I said, the dark blue version is in Wave 2, along with a Red Ninja. We knew that this was gonna look like this. This is based on the artwork we've seen in several places, and it's actually a clever reuse of the Snake Eyes body. The overlays do a good job of hiding that fact. It makes it clunky and a bit awkward, but at the same time, it, it's modernized. It's the look of the rest of the line. It comes with the weapons from the deluxe version of Snake Eyes that was available on Pulse, and they found a way to put all of those weapons onto the figure at the same time. He can holster all of that shit. I don't know about the loincloth, though. That's the biggest affront to my sensibilities but it looks like the belt can come off and even the shoulder pads so we'll see how that goes and then finishing off wave three yeah it's a three figure wave is gung ho again reuse but i don't mind them using that kick-ass roadblock for another round on the pegs especially seeing the shin pads and the various armor bits in more realistic colors with wave one my biggest gripe was the gold seeing it in gray and metal colors it it blends in. It's not as awkward. New head and hat, of course, and the hat is removable, and he's got some armor on the, and the pad over here, but then the pants are camo. I'd like to see this in the original turquoise colors, though, just to see what happens. But the lack of paint on the backpack and weapons make them seem a bit plain, and yeah, the weapons, again, are a mix of sci-fi. Again, they shoot laser guns. And again, they're not attached to the figure. I'll just find other guns if it bugs me too much. But that's not all. For a fan channel exclusive, we get Pimp Daddy. I mean, woo! Profit Director Destro. Again, it's reuse using the Wave 1 Destro body. And that may be a bit off-putting because three of these four reveals essentially use earlier bodies. But at the same time, that's how we get future unique sculpts and other characters. Budget, people. Budget. But this Destro isn't all been there, done that. Besides the red costume color and the animal print and a use of gold I can get behind, there's also a cape. Very ornate. Looks like a, the pelt is actually hanging off his back. Get some fantastic sunglasses and then some burning cash. I never knew that I needed burning cash 
until I saw it here. It's dumb, it's silly, but it's a nice homage to a classic figure that's just a ton of fun waiting to happen. I mean, just think of all the things you can do with this figure. Plus it's fan channel. And what do we always say about fan channel? We can just pre-order and wait, unlike other companies. But besides that, fan channel was made specifically for stuff like this, just rehashes and repaints. Not essential, but a cool release. Finally, the one surprise during the live stream today because the other figures were leaked last night, which always ruins the surprise, but we learned that Amazon will be getting an exclusive Arctic Mission Storm Shadow or Ninja Force Storm Shadow. Not really my favorite version and probably not a lot of other people's favorite versions, but like Snake Eyes, I figure we're going to see quite a few Storm Shadows throughout the life of this line. And again, it's a neat little homage to that original concept. Because the team also said that classic versions of some of these characters is a possibility. They're just looking for the right window, like say the 40th anniversary in a couple of years, or after they already sell us the modern versions, you know. <laughs> so if you don't care for these looks, and judging by the chat during the live stream today, there are, how to put this delicately, some people who are taking this way too seriously. You can wait and see if they're going to do the classic versions later. And that's it for this week. In fact, well, that's not all of it. There were some other things I saw, but we're going to push that to next week because ooh, it's, I get overloaded. As always, all these pictures and information and links to pre-orders will be on the Foosh front page Saturday at noon. If you enjoyed this weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I need a nap. I'll catch you on the foosh. McFarlane also sent these DC Multiverse White Knight figures, and I'm, I'm gonna look at those Monday, I think. Very artist-specific, but uh, they're cool looking.